Hey, what's up everybody? We're back in Modeler today, and I wanted to show you stuff that is kind of technical and a bit complicated, and stuff that was, you know, confusing at first, and I get a lot of questions on, so I'm gonna try to cover this, but in a applied way, and not just telling you, oh, um, this is what you can do with this or that, but show you while I'm making something, um, how I deal with all of that stuff at once. But before we start, I'm gonna highly suggest you to watch the tutorial series that was made by the Substance team. Um, if you haven't already watched it, go watch this uh, as a homework. It's gonna, you know, explain everything very clearly, much better than I could. Um, but I want to show you how I manage all of these you know tools and complicated features on something while i'm making it and just to get this out of the way i'm using a quest 3 headset and i'm gonna post my pc specs right here um, because i get that question often and might as well get technical today so here's that Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to cover was the resolution of layers. So basically, each layer that you make has a specific resolution, right? And you can find that here, and you can see it if you hover the buttons. You can see the, you know, the mesh, um, the density of the mesh. If I get lower or higher, get more, um, you know the squares on it and the difference in between the two would be if I have a low resolution layer meaning it doesn't have a lot of voxels um, it is much faster and much smoother than a layer that has higher resolution right because the brush can't really keep up with how much voxels it needs to output so it starts to lag so the faster you move the more stepping you're gonna have right but with a low resolution layer even if i move quite fast um it doesn't have as much to compute so it's able to keep up with my brush and i can make really smooth and fluid you know shapes right so whenever I'm sketching something at first, I start with something that has very low resolution, right? So I'm able to block in stuff quite fast. The second thing I want to cover is the symmetry and the repetition. And those two modes are different because let's say this layer right here is symmetrical. Um, I can draw on it, I can move it, but I can only move it uh, locked to the center, right? So if I take it and I try to move it this way, um, it's going to stay locked to the middle. And that's very useful because you can just start, you know, to place stuff around each other. And it, it, it keeps, you know, the same uh, symmetry. So whenever I'm blocking, let's say, my body, like a torso or something, that's always in the middle. I'm going to keep it just on symmetry. But let's say I want to make arms, right? If I start to make arms with the symmetrical mode, the mirror mode, and I try to, you know, move them apart, I can't because it's still tied to the middle, right? So in that case, um, I'd rather use half of it, right? But use the repetition. So instead of being mirrored, it's being repeated on the other side. And that's very useful for arms and legs because you're able to move them apart and away from the center. look a little bit better but 
the legs, the arms, any limbs would be, you know, repeated rather than just mirrored. Right? But you can also have mirrored and repeated layers. What I mean is, let's say this layer is mirrored and symmetrical. And I draw a leg. The best way to approach this would be to make a group out of this layer. So I'm able to move it off center, meaning there's a group right here with only this layer in it, right? The layer itself is symmetrical, so it can't be moved off center, but the group is not. So I'm able to move the group freely from the, the symmetry, right? Let's get rid of this. And then this group can get repeated on the other side. So you have a layer that is mirrored and repeated. And then any other layers that you add to that group. So if I select um, this layer, okay, and I make a new layer, it's gonna create a layer in the same group. And now I'll have two layers that are still tied to the, the axis right our mirror axis but are independent and if i select the whole group i'm able to move it wherever i want for the next part i'm just gonna turn on this setting right here in the preference uh, I usually have it turned off because it is bothering me a little bit, but to explain this next part is going to be easier to have it turned on because if I select the layer, um, the rest, you don't see it super well, but change the colors, we can see stuff a little bit better, but if I select a group, if I scope into a group, um, it's going to change color and I'm going to be able to see what I'm selecting. So scoping is very confusing at first, but it allows you to manage all of your layers without having to look at this graph right here, right? So you can scope in to layers by going up with a thumbstick and going down by the thumbstick. So whenever I say I'm going to scope in, I'm holding up and then I'm pointing at this layer and then I'm going to select that layer. Right? So I can swap quickly between all of the layers just by pressing up or down to go back out of the, um, the groups, right? So if I go, I scope into this group, now I'm selecting only what's happening in this group. And if I scope in again to that group, I'm going to select that layer. I will scope out, I hit back, and I go back out of the, um, the tree. Right? So what that means is I can grab, let's say, this layer. I can scope in to that layer. And now I'm going to have a group of both of these together. Right? I can scope into that group and then move them separately. But if I select a whole group, I'm able to move everything together. Because I just created another group that is the whole arm. So that's also useful if I sculpt my whole um, torso, right? And everything is grouped together. this I can group them here and I can move everything you know independently and then start to sculpt into my group by keeping my symmetry on by keeping all my layers together but if I move my whole um, torso everything moves with it okay. back out and if I'm on the root folder my symmetry should be in the middle I can 
attach this to whatever I want. These are still mirrored. So if I start posing, how I would approach it is I would select all this stuff, remove the mirror, right? Because I want them to be able to move separately from each other. And then every limb, I would make a grouped instance out of it. I want, let's say, make a link, make a link, and probably separately to make a link, make a link. Because if I link this whole thing together, and if I change the position of only one of them, the other one's gonna get repeated. So if they're all linked, but separately, like each a section of a limb, you know, that can get uh, repeated much easier. So I can grab all of this, create a copy, and then flip it. So they're copies, but they're also instances of each other. So I can start to move them independently and then pose my character however I want. Okay. And I'm scoping in and out of layers and groups by going up and down and selecting stuff. And if I want to go modify something that's in that group, I scope into the group, move the layer, scope out of the group. So it is a bit confusing at first. The more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. And at some point, it's just going to become, you know, muscle memory or second nature. And you'll be able to move in and out of stuff um, fast and easily. Right? I turn my setting back off so that I don't get that color change because I like to see my colors um, correctly whenever I'm selecting stuff. Uh, I'm able to keep track in my head of what is grouped together and I don't need to be you know, isolated. I can just start um, moving around and seeing like, oh, I'm in that group because I'm able to select um, only this stuff. So for a character like this, um, all of the middle section would be one group that is a bunch of layers that are mirrored together. And for all the limbs, it would be groups that are linked and flipped across. In the blocking phase, I just do repetition because it's faster to see it. But once I'm ready to kind of pose my character and start to flesh it out, design it a bit more, um, I make sure that my stuff is linked so that it's easier to manage. If I ever have layers that I want to take off of groups, um, there's multiple ways to do it. Either you select your whole group and then you break the link or you break the, the group. But what you can do is grab your layer and then scope out and it'll be out of um, out of that group. Right? Let's see where my layer lives. But it's in a root. It's not in any of these um, groups that I made. right? Because I sculpt out of it. So now it's back to being symmetrical, but tied to the main axis of uh, the project. Right? I can group it by itself. Place it here. Make a link. Copy, flip. Boom. Now it's set up properly, I can keep sculpting on it, I can keep making more groups, okay. I can split it in different parts, and all of these parts are going to be nicely connected and linked and repeated properly. One last thing I want to cover for the whole resolution thing is that you can kind of fake that your layer is very clean um, if you manage your resolution well. Like, if my layer, let's say, has a low resolution, 
but I sculpt into it, you know, stuff is kind of janky and I want it to look very, very clean. I can make a new layer that is much more high res, but just for my details, right? So as a whole, this layer will look very clean because you're like, oh, the detail is super sharp. But in reality, most of it is very low res. Most of it is not sharp at all, but you can trick people into believing your stuff is very sharp and very clean because all of your details are, right? So you manage your resolution properly because if all of your sculpt was very, very high res, like you made out of these very high res layer, it would get super heavy and you wouldn't be able to, you know, render it and all that stuff. You need to kind of be efficient with your layer resolution. And if all of your layers are very low res, yes, you don't have a lot of polygons, but then your sculpt isn't super detailed. So it's a balance of like how much detail and how much performance do I want in my um, scene or sculpt, right? So I usually keep the very high res layers for areas of attention, like, you know, cool little details in the joints or details in the face. Like my face might be lower resolution, but my eyeball, let's say, I can make it much more high res so that it looks more detailed. And when you look at this, you're like, oh, this is very fine and sharp, but in reality, it's really not. It is kind of janky, and it's no big deal because we like janky stuff. But sometimes, if you want very, very sharp details, up the resolution of only part of it, and it's going to look more detailed than it is. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I tried to cover everything that seemed kind of confusing to me at first when I started to use Modeler. So hopefully it helps you and you're able to make sense out of this uh, confusing stuff. So thanks again for stopping by. Um, if there's more questions that you have or stuff that you'd like to see, please leave a comment. And thanks for the amazing support you guys have been showing. I'm very, very grateful for it. Please share with me the stuff that you make uh, in Modeler. I'd really like to see what you guys are creating. So either, you know, tag me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Um, I'll also put the link uh, to Discord if you want to go share more stuff. And uh, it'd be interesting also to see if uh, you guys want to do some critique stuff where you upload one of your sculpts and we can go over... Um, how I would, you know, improve or fix uh, some stuff that is hard for you guys. So, yeah, have fun sculpting cool stuff in VR and see you next time. Cheers.